Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of those very simple concepts which often are overlooked for its potential uses because it tends to fall into a very specific genre of use due to its nature. And the idea today is that we're going to be taking crop update detection, that is their growth, and using that for things other than crop farming. So let's get started, shall we? Alright, so the first thing we're going to need is a block update detector. Now, any type of update detector will work. However, even though there are more compact versions, I tend to prefer my version right here, simply because it doesn't rely on any bugs, aside from the updating itself, which I don't really consider to be a bug in the first place. Now, what they do is, they simply detect when a block is updated near the detector bit. So, if we place a block here, or update a block, it will send a quick pulse down, and then we can update it again and do the same thing. It doesn't really matter how you update it either. You can place a lever down here or a torch or whatever and it will work fine. Now how it works is that the water is going to flow down, lift up this boat which will activate this torch when it's turned off using this bit of redstone here and we are preventing the water from flowing onto the redstone by using a sign here and the pressure plate itself. So only one square is really going to be raising this boat Afterward, we are inverting the power and sending it into this piston and this piston on a delay. And this delay is the, um, I don't know, third tick. And the idea is that we want to cut off the water on the bottom and the top and then retract the top and then retract the bottom. That way, this hole to the right here or wherever you want to place it is going to be the nearest hole so that the water will only flow into that hole until we remove this piston and then afterward when the block is updated then it will realize that it has two potential very close holes and it will go into both and then it will be cut off again and you can just see how that works there you can see that that is retracted first and then that is retracted so that's pretty much the simple design there and now we can move on to some examples of its use so now we can use that concept of detection to detect when sugar canes grow to their maximum height and then cut them off to allow them to grow again so we can constantly be firing events off after a specified amount of time that could be slightly random, which is something that is a bit difficult to do in a game where you don't have random timers. So the idea is that if we break this glass here, the sugar cane will be able to grow up to two more spaces, then it will activate the detector, and then at the end here, we have siphoned off a bit of power on a maximum delay to break off the sugar cane afterward because we want to make sure that it's on the delay so that the water doesn't flow on top of our sugar cane because there is a hole that's right next to it. So that would be a bit of a problem. And uh, afterward, we're also using that power, same exact power. You can just see it going across there, activating the piston, and then into this block to sort of make a randomly generated chest. So we have a sort of false chest here made of a, made from a cauldron and a trapdoor. And I don't even know if cauldrons are always going to be available. I hope so. They're very useful. But the idea is that we have a dispenser in the back with random loot, such as a clock and a whole bunch of coal and that sort of thing. Uh, things. And then it's just going to spit out a random bit of loot into this chest. And if it spits out a couple during this uh, its lifespan, then you might be able to get lucky and get a couple bits of loot from a single uh, sort of... I don't know, raid, whatever. So, if we were to place, uh, sort of artificially grow the sugar cane, we can see that it activates, and then it spits out a random item into our artificial chest. So if we look in there, we got an iron sword in this chest. It is a bit weird because we can just walk up and get the item, but it kind of works out. You can, uh, for example, make a adventure map where you have, I don't know, uh, witches' cauldrons, and it spits out a random potion that you get by walking up to the cauldron. And uh, you can do all kinds of sort uh, great stuff with this. You can build shelves. Uh, if you use stairs, you can actually dispense through the stairs and that sort of thing. So uh, just sort of try out different stuff and uh, find what works for you in your adventure map, and um, it's quite useful. Now, sugarcane is great and all, but what if you need your events to be more random or take much longer for them to activate? The problem with sugarcane is that it grows up two spaces and then it reaches its limit. It can get cut off and activate again, but it 
doesn't take very long for that to happen, really. And if you need an event to take days or many PvP events, then you're going to need something else. And we can use mushrooms for that, because mushrooms don't have a limit to how far they can grow, as far as I know, at least. So what we can do is we can place a mushroom at the beginning of a fuse, and then let the mushroom grow all the way to the end, activate our detector, and then cut it off. And then it can activate again whenever it reaches the uh, detector again. So the idea is that we've just set up the normal detector, and then we've taken the same power used to break off this bit of water here, and sent that down to our fuse area to break off the end bits of our fuse, leaving only the remaining source mushroom. Keep in mind that this source mushroom will also break off in this example because it is far too bright, and you want to make sure that your fuse area is completely covered, sealed from all light, so that mushroom mushrooms can properly grow. So just to demonstrate, if we were to pr place a mushroom here, uh, we can see that it is going to activate this door and leave it open permanently. So it's really great for PvP or adventure maps where you want to open up a secret uh, randomly or you want to completely change the layout of a PvP map using pistons and doors and sort of open up new environments and make your map more dynamic, which I'm, I'm really into that sort of thing. So we accomplished this simply by taking a quick pulse generator from this bit here, our inverted uh, bit coming off of this pressure plate here, and we are putting that through the quick pulse generator so that we can activate this state toggler. You can call it whatever you want, I don't care, I know what people call them, and uh, I prefer more simple titles because it's easier for new redstone users to understand and remember. But that being said, if you haven't built one of these or you don't really understand by looking at it because it could be confusing for some new to you redstone, I will provide this map in the download uh, section of the description for you to download and look at yourself. And the idea is that if we were to activate it again, it would activate this door again, closing it and sealing the entrance until it's activated again. So if we were to do that, bam. Very, very useful, again, for PvP and adventure maps, but mostly for PvP. And next we'll move on to some somewhat related, somewhat unrelated examples. If you've watched my previous videos, you're probably aware that I like to give the defending team or the defending players uh, some sort of system in a PvP map that they have to constantly be feeding effort, feeding labor into in order to keep it active because the system will shut off and they'll have to restart it because it's run out of its power source or whatever. And the idea this time is that we have a water engine, basically. It is a large system which requires constant supplies of water in order to keep it active and if it runs out then the defenses will come down, barricades will come down, turrets will stop working, that sort of thing. So the idea this time it comes from Isaiah 658 however the way that I've implemented the idea is entirely different. I've I have permission from this person uh, to post a video on it, however, I don't think this is going to be exactly how they thought that it would end up. However, it should work quite well anyway. So the idea is we place water in here, and then that activates a boat detector here, the same thing we, that we had before, basically a pressure plate in that corner, redstone here, a sign to protect the redstone, and then that will activate this torch, which will activate this piston here, it's sticky piston, which will give this mushroom a place to grow on. And when that mushroom grows down here, it will activate this detector, and then that will break off our connection to the water here, which will then require the player to add more water into the engine. Uh, meanwhile, whenever it activates, we're going to take this power from our inverter as well and put that here into our lamp so that we have a little bit of an on light. Really, uh, really glad that Jeb is implementing more adventure and PvP type ideas because the community can really build much better things than um, you know developers could possibly imagine. So just to demonstrate, if we put some water in the hole here, then the light comes on, the boat's up there, which means our sticky piston is active and holding out a place for this mushroom to grow on. Now uh, it's a bit too bright for it to grow on, and even if it wasn't, in creative mode they grow really slowly in this current version. So if we artificially grow a mushroom down here, then our entire system is reset and we require more water. However, 
if you would like to add a manual reset for some reason, for example, if you needed to quickly re uh, lower your barricades in a PvP map and run out, you can simply place a button there. That's all you need to do. That'll activate your piston, break off the water flow, and there you go. Uh, we will move on to the more compact designs now, however, I don't necessarily endorse them entirely because it does use that piston bug that I mentioned before. Okay, keep in mind that I'm building this in version 1.2.3, and if you are trying this out in a later version, you can build this simple test to find out if it works in your version before you spend the time and effort to build something much larger with it. So the idea with this bug is that if we have a block that is diagonal from a piston, we can power that block, update a block next to the piston, and then it will be pretty much powered permanently until we deactivate the block diagonally, and then update it again. So we can use this in the same way that we did the water updatey bit, except that it's much more compact. So what we can do with that is we have pretty much the same setup, but much more compact. Download the map if you want to see how the inner internals uh, look, because they're a bit different. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same, just as I said, more compact, and we're taking the power from our inverter here, and instead using it to power this piston down here. Here's where our mushroom goes, however underneath it we have our target block, and when that is uh, when that is in this state, it's underneath the target, or it's underneath the source mushroom, so it can't grow, but when it extends, the mushroom can grow onto the target block, and that will activate this piston, which will then raise. When that happens, the power from our inverter here will also be going through this block, through this redstone, through that block, through this repeater, into that block, and that will power our piston here, which will cut off our water source and reset the system. And it's a, you know, it's a bit more complex, but it's, it's fairly simple when you get used to the mechanics. And down here where our boat is, it's a bit different because I couldn't use the sign to protect the red, uh, redstone anymore to keep it more compact. But otherwise, it's fairly similar. And over here we have the exact same thing, except that we've built it down lower, so it's not as um, vertically compact. But otherwise, it's still the same thing. And we just are using sugarcane instead, and rather than uh, using an extended piston to make a source block for, or a target block for a source mushroom to grow onto, instead we're using an extended piston to prevent sugarcane from growing. However, when that, it, uh, when that piston is retracted, the sugarcane will be able to grow, activate the block, and the same exact system will be fired. So again, we can demonstrate that. Put the water in the hole. On light comes on, and then whenever the extended piston is here, we can go mushroom on it artificially, and that will reset the entire system. And then our light is off. And uh, I forgot to mention before that if you want to siphon power off of this to actually power your systems, which is kind of the point, you can just take power off the same sort of line, uh, same block that you're getting the power for your on light if you choose to use an on light in the first place. And uh, you can always put a sign in front instead of a button if you want to give your users a bit more of a tip how to use the mechanic because, you know, they're not going to know what what's going on unless you tell them in your PvP or adventure maps in the first place. And that should be about it. Uh, I, as I said, I will include this map in the description if you want to take a look at it yourself. And if you're new to Redstone, I highly advise it if you want to learn Redstone, although you should go through some tutorials first, I'm sure. And I will see you next time. I'm thinking about also making videos unrelated to Minecraft. If you would like to see a video related or unrelated to Minecraft, what sort of video would you like to see? A tutorial? A Let's Play series? Let me know in the comments.